How you doing, everybody? Okay, part two here of the Make the Money and Runny podcast minute here, Vasi Vada Party on, on Tuesday, April 27th. Getting a lot of flack these days for uh, April 27th apparently being the end of the NBA season. It's not true, or the end the end of the uh, – yeah, one second here. Something's going on here, and I can't get it on Facebook, so I'm trying to figure out what i got to do on Facebook here to do this. So let's see. What we've got going on here uh anyway all right so let's go on with this facebook live sales media youtube page as well as uh, my youtube page you can subscribe and get to those, uh get to anytime you want all right the major league baseball season a lot of texts and a lot of phone calls that's what prompted me to do this minute today april 27th the season's not over everybody it's good when the san francisco giants are playing well i live in the bay area the giants are 15 and 8 they're one of three teams in the Major League Baseball that have the best record to reside in the Bay Area. The Oakland A's, who won last night at Tampa, they won 13 out of 14, I believe, after their 12-game winning streak was snapped on Sunday. The Dodgers did lose to the Reds last night. They've fallen into a tie with the San Francisco Giants at 15-8. and eight. Let me give you a little hint here. The Dodgers' run differential is a lot higher. They're playing with a lot of injuries. The bullpen, as I said at the beginning of the year, is going to be something that is, something that, uh, is going to be an Achilles heel for them until they figure out what to do, but everybody's injured on that team. There's no Cody Bellinger. Uh, the pitching staff has been okay. David Price moved to the bullpen has been has been great. Now the San Francisco Giants, 15 and eight. Their starting pitching is unbelievable right now. Jessica Feeney, you knew he was going to be better. He's a fly ball pitcher. That doesn't work in Cincinnati. He's here in San Francisco at night, especially the ball does not travel. He's had a great run. Alex Wood, who was with the Dodgers in 2020, great starting pitcher. He pitched well against the Marlins on Friday night, allowing only one hit, the leadoff home run to Jazz Chisholm Jr., one of the greatest names in baseball ever, Jazz Chisholm Jr. So the Marlins lost three out of four to the Giants this weekend. The Giants got a victory against the Rockies last night, a big four-run first, big five-run second, 12 nothing. the shutout. Descafini goes to the league game. Johnny Cueto still on the injured list. He'll come back maybe after one more start. Logan Webb pitched well, hit a triple on Sunday as well against the Marlins. Giants playing well. The best thing that they're doing right now, it's not even the pitch. It's their defense. The defense is outstanding. They haven't made an error in three games, six errors in 23 games, which is great. That's only about 40 errors, 50 errors a year. They're tied for first. But let's tamper the enthusiasm down. It's great that they're going great. Longoria and Posey are back, and they're hitting the snot out of the ball. And the pitch has been great, and even the bullpen's done well. And Kapler's let his starters go a lot longer. Fact is, that it's only 23 games. The run differential for the Dodgers and the Giants are completely different. The Giants have to hit, and they know they've got to get their bats going as we go to May because everybody goes into a slump. Every aspect of any sport goes into a slump. Right now, the hitting's not hitting as well. They're getting clutch hits. The starting pitching's been great. I think they're third in Major League Baseball in starters, ERAs. Jake McGee has been great in the bullpen. The Dodgers right now, they've got to figure out their bullpen. Kenley Jansen has not been good for a couple of years. Uh, he had a couple of good outings recently, but uh, overall, they're just going to have to find a long-term solution for the bullpen. I say Blake Trinan, but uh, that's Dave Roberts' choice. He's won eight divisions in a row, and he knows a lot more about baseball. The problem with everybody giving their opinions on this, and, and it's good that everybody has their opinions. The problem with everybody, including media like me, to give our opinions, we think we're GMs. We think fantasy baseball and fantasy football – we do well in those leagues that we can be a GM of any team. We don't, we go to work every day. We come home, we spend a couple hours. We think we know more than the general managers and the team executives that study the stuff 24 hours that look at these minor league players. The Giants didn't sign any free, big name free agent guys. Everybody was all upset. Oh, what kind of year are you going to have? What kind of year are you going to have? Our anxiety knows what he's doing. The, the uh, scouting department knows what they're doing. Every team has a good scouting department. Every team finds players. So the Giants and Dodgers, Long way to go. A lot of people talking about the Padres taking three out of four of the Dodgers. Yeah, they're four and three against Los Angeles right now. That's great. They're in third place. They also got swept by the Milwaukee Brewers at home. Yeah, you, good teams don't lose at home like that. Certainly don't get swept. Obviously, they, they don't hit as well as everybody thinks they do. Fernando Tatis, the cover boy of MLB Show, the 21, he hurt his shoulder a few weeks ago. Is that the same as the SI jinx or the Madden jinx? I don't know, but he's come back. He hit two home runs on Friday night. By the way, the anniversary of two home runs at Dodger Stadium. His father did the same thing, except one better. He had two grand slams off the same pitcher in the same inning back in 1997. The pitcher's name, for those that are old enough to remember, Chan Ho Park of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Now, Randy Johnson, I'm sorry, not Randy Johnson, Madison Bumgarner, who had a no-hitter for seven innings 
on Sunday, the game ended because it was a double header, is not being credited with a no hitter on Sunday. Uh, kind of interesting. These are Major League Baseball rules, and they should count it as a no hitter because baseball baseball has made the rule that double headers are going to be seven innings. But under the under the original rule, you have to go nine innings to throw a no hitter. And I posted this the other day, and people again my age that, that don't remember this in 1991. The Montreal Expos were visiting Los Angeles in a weekend series. I was in college, and I remember this. Mark Gardner, who was a former Giants bullpen coach, former San Francisco Giants pitcher, pitched, had a great career with the Expos for, for about a number of years. Uh, he had a nine-inning no-hitter. The game was scoreless against the Dodgers. The Dodgers ended up winning on that Friday night in 10 innings. Mark Gardner got credit for nine innings of no-hit ball. The Dodgers were not very good that year. They didn't hit at all. And then on Sunday, Dennis Martinez, that's going way far back, El Presidente, the first player ever from Nicaragua at that time to play in Major League Baseball. He threw a perfect game against the Dodgers on Sunday. So that was a rough weekend to hit for the Dodgers, but that's never happened before. On Sunday, the Arizona Diamondbacks, Zach Gallen, whose name you'll hear for a lot of years to come with Arizona, he threw a one-hitter against the Braves in Atlanta, and then Randy Johnson threw a no-hitter. I'm sorry, why do I keep saying Randy Johnson? Madison Bumgarner threw a no-hitter against the Braves on Sunday afternoon. Randy Johnson threw a perfect game about 18 years ago against the Braves in Atlanta as well. Maybe that's why it's sticking in my mind. Or I should write better notes. Or I should get that lobotomy check, one or the other. But anyway, Madison Bumgarner threw the no-hitter. So it's the first time in two consecutive games that a team has had one hit or less in two games, uh, two straight games. And that happened to the Atlanta Braves over the weekend against the Diamondbacks. The Braves have tough pitches problems right now. The Cubs got a lot of runs off them. They were li- they were lucky to score. The National League East is down. Jacob DeGrom, the best pitcher in baseball, had a great game on Friday night. We mentioned yesterday, 15 strikeouts, uh, no walks, four hits against the Washington Nationals. He's a two-time Cy Young Award winner. But the National League East right now is kind of kind of sappy. The Reds, as we said, got that victory against the Dodgers last night. They had a 3-1 lead. Corey tied it up in the eighth, but then the uh, two-run home run in the top of the 10th inning off Kenley Jansen. Gave the Reds the victory. Jesse Winker, another name you'll hear for a lot of years with the Cincinnati Reds, as a, a terrific outfielder, has got a lot of power at all fields. He's the one who hit the two-run home run. Dodgers had a chance at the bottom of the ten, couldn't get it done. <clears throat> They're four and six in their last ten. They've lost two in a row. They're tied for first in the National League West. The Giants are tied with them. The Padres are third three games back. Again, they lost to Milwaukee. Got swept by Milwaukee last weekend. Giants Padres play this weekend. Dodgers are going to Milwaukee for four after they finish up their series with the Reds. The National League Central, right now the Milwaukee Brewers lead the National League Central. They lost yesterday. My guy, Corbin Burns, still has not walked anybody this year. The record for most innings pitched without a walk, um, I'm sorry, most strikeouts without a walk is 51. Corbin Burns right now at 49 strikeouts and no walks. His ERA jumped from 0.39 to 0.161 as the Marlins jumped on him a little bit, five runs off Burns. They win 8-0, so the Marlins got their bats healthy after leaving San Francisco. Move over to the American League West now. The A's got a victory at Tampa Bay last night. They're in first place in the American League West. They are two games ahead of the Seattle Mariners, who are 13-10. and 10. They lost to Houston last night. Seattle Mariners playing a lot better than everybody thought they were going to do. Mike Trout and the Angels, they are three games back. Trout missed two games over the weekend, shoulder, something like that, but when he comes back, he's like the Kevin Durant of basketball. He just rolls out of bed and hits. All he did was go four for four last night. His batting average is 443. His on base percentage is 534. And his OPS, his OPS is like 1100 or something like that. So that's what they call the slash line of baseball. So when you see those numbers come up on the on the screen, it's batting average, on base percentage, and OPS, which is on base percentage plus slugging percentage, a little education value here. But the Angels are right there in the American League West. They're going to be good. They better find the pitch, though, because right now pitching is hurting them. They've got uh, the Houston Astros are hosting Seattle. Houston got off to a great start, and then they struggled a little bit. They had the COVID issues. Altuve, Bregman, Maldonado, Alvarez all out. They're now 11-11, three and a half back. And then the Texas Rangers are six games back, but only four out in the wild card standing. So, that's the American League West. In the American League Central right now, the Kansas City Royals, the big story right now, 14 and 7, second best record in baseball after the top three teams, 15 and 8. Actually, better record percentage wise because they only have seven losses. They won five in a row, including a four game sweep over the Detroit Tigers, which they outscored the Tigers 15 and 5. Now, we know the Royals haven't been very good 
for a number of years. They had that three-year period when they were in the World Series two years in a row, losing to the Giants in 2014 and then losing and then uh, beating the New York Mets in 2015 in the World Series that year. That was with Lorenzo Cain and, and uh, uh, Mike Moustakas and guys like that that were on the team. Salvador Perez, Greg Holland, the only two guys left from those teams that are on the roster right now, and they're having a good year. They did come up against the – against the uh, Detroit Tigers who are struggling in that division. Chicago White Sox are 12 and nine. They're two games back. They've won four in a row and they've got the, uh, they've got the Detroit Tigers coming in this week, Cleveland and Cleveland and Minnesota are continuing their series. Minnesota struggling and they've got terrible defense right now. They're two and eight in their last 10. So it's going to be an interesting baseball season, but any, but then again, and everybody's asking me on Facebook, the Yankees are still getting all the play. The Red Sox are playing well, but the Yankees are still getting on national TV. Problem is the Yankees have terrible defense. They don't have any starting pitching after Garrett Cole. And if you have bad defense behind uh, adequate pitch, you're not going to win. I don't care how good your offense is right now. They're even minus 10 in the run differential. And that's with an offense that's supposed to just blow doors off everybody. They're even behind the Baltimore Orioles, the Toronto Blue Jays, Tampa Bay Rays, the Boston Red Sox are 14 and 9. They won yesterday, or they won on Sunday. They had a day off yesterday. They're plus 20 in run differential, but Got to see how their pitching goes right now. Evaldi lost. Evaldi's the race right now, and he lost on Saturday. So that's, that's some of the baseball stuff that we have going on in the NBA. Let's look at the NBA a little bit here. The NBA, the Warriors are in 10th place right now. I live in the Bay Area, so everybody's talking about the Warriors. They're 31-30. and 30. They're a half game behind San Antonio. San Antonio beat Washington yesterday, and Washington just got off an eight-game winning streak. They lost uh, two to the Spurs yesterday in overtime. Washington in 10th place. 27 and 34, three games back of the Pacers in their in the standings right now. Indiana and Portland are going to play tonight. It's an interesting game. Portland's a five-point favorite, and we do talk about the wagers and the odds. Portland, five-point favorite on the road at Indianapolis. They've lost. Uh, they've lost. Where have they lost? They lost five in a row, have the Blazers. The Pacers have won three in a row. I know there's no Sabonis in, in the lineup, or at least he wasn't in the lineup the last couple of games. But how do you make Portland a favorite? They just lost twice to Memphis. And now they're going to go on the road to play a pretty good team in Indiana, who's in the ninth seed in the NBA. They're three games up on Washington, as I said, and only a game back of Charlotte and Miami, two back of Boston for that important seed. If you finish sixth or higher, you don't get into the play, and you don't have to play in the play-in tournament, and you just wait for them to play themselves out. So it's an important game for Portland. It's an important game for Indiana. Portland in seventh place, as I said, they're one game back of Dallas. Dallas and Golden State are going to play tonight. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game for that Golden State off their victory, off their victory with uh, Sacramento on Sunday, and then uh, Dallas had two wins against the Lakers. Everybody's bagging on the Lakers a little bit too. I don't know if it's a, I don't know if it's an anti-LeBron thing or whatever the case is, but uh, Anthony Davis has come back. LeBron James will be out another week or so, but he'll be back, and they'll be a better team. They'll be better than a fifth set, fifth seed team. The Clippers. How do you lose to the Pelicans on the road? I just don't think the Clippers are good enough to match up with the Lakers if everybody's healthy. Lakers are going to be there at the end. The Warriors, if they get into the, if they can get into the first round of the play-in tournament and get into the next round of the playoffs, they're as good as anybody right now with Steph Curry right there, an MVP candidate. By the way, he's not the MVP. If they go on a run in the next ten to twelve games, he's not the MVP. He may be the best player in the league, but that give him the most outstanding player of the year, player of the year award. But don't give him an MVP award right now. There's other guys in the MVP conversation. Jokic from Denver, Joel Embiid from Philadelphia, even though he's missed a few games, that might hurt him in the MVP vote. And one guy that's not even talked about, he's not the best player on the team, on his own team, is Chris Paul. Tell me the Phoenix Suns would not be as good as they are without Chris Paul on that team. The NBA standings right now, Phoenix is one game back to Utah, who lost to Minnesota. Another MVP candidate, but he's going to be out for a while, or he'll be out a couple of games. Donovan Mitchell hurt, but without Donovan Mitchell on that team, the Jazz aren't going to go very far either. They have the best record in the NBA, 44 and 17. Brooklyn Nets are 41 and 20 in the East. They're a game better than Philadelphia, but I'm going to tell you why Philadelphia is better right now. Philadelphia is better right now because they play defense. When they have Simmons and Embiid on the floor, not only are they good offensively, they're good defensively. They're plus four and a half in point differential. So are the Nets, but that's because they score a lot. The game the Nets played against Boston on Friday night. They just they were down 15, they were down 10, but then their offense came back and kicked in gear. I just think that if a game came down between the Nets and the Sixers right now, the Sixers would clamp them down defensively and be able to stop the Nets. Kevin Durant, the Mike Trout of baseball, as I said, Mike Trout was Kevin Durant of, of uh, baseball. 
Kevin Durant injured for the last three weeks, rolls out of bed on Sunday, scores 33 against the Phoenix Suns. Without him, they would have lost that game to Phoenix on Sunday. And how about those Phoenix Suns snapping the New York Knicks eight-game winning streak, nine-game winning streak, I think it was. Uh, let's see here. Nine-game winning streak that the New York Knicks had. The New York Knicks are fourth in the East right now. They're tied with Atlanta for the fourth seed. And then Boston's in the sixth seed right now. And then, of course, Miami, Charlotte, Indiana, Washington – are all there. So it's going to be interesting. Final thing here, the NFL draft on Thursday. Casey and Charlie are going to talk a lot about it. As I said, I'm getting in my shot on Thursday. My second shot, so if you haven't been vaccinated, I recommend you do it. it. You'll be better off for it. And we can all get back to normal here. But uh, I'm so sick of the draft right now. So I think that's a perfect day for me to get a shot. Not the lobotomy like everybody keeps asking about, but a shot. Uh, they're, they're going to work on the lobotomy probably later in life. Although I am forgetting a lot of things, so maybe they do have to check it. We'll see. But uh, Charlie and Casey will talk about the draft. We had Russell Baxter on yesterday. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars, the New York Jets, the San Francisco 49ers, the Atlanta Falcons. Everybody's interested. What's going to happen in the top four? I am so sick of it. Every, a month ago, the 49ers made the trade. We all think because of fantasy football. We all think because of DraftKings or, or the other companies that do the fantasy sports that we're all GMs. We all know what's better for, what's better for the team. And we're all going to be unhappy if Mac Jones can pick by the 49ers. We don't know squat. None of you out there know squat. I don't know squat. They've looked at all the game film. They've looked at all the game tape. Uh, I like Zach Wilson. He's not going to be available. And here's why Zach Wilson. I think Kyle Shanahan, and I have no proof to prove this, but I think Kyle Shanahan really wanted Zach Wilson. Robert Saleh, the new coach of the New York Jets, spent five years in draft rooms with Kyle Shanahan. Maybe not on the offensive side of it, but he knows what type of players Kyle Shanahan likes. And I think that he likes uh, Zach Wilson a lot. And I think he likes the opportunity that it gives him to uh, start a new franchise or rebuild the Jets franchise. Get some protection for that young man from BYU. He needs the protection. He's going to be successful. And if the Jets make the playoffs, you heard it here first, it's going to be because of Zach Wilson and because they have a good offensive line, because their defense is pretty good. And Robert Sala is going to improve that defense. Remember the Jets won. Uh, they, they were they were winless until the last two weeks. They beat the Browns and then the uh, Rams back-to-back -back weeks. So if they get some offensive line protection and they do, in fact, take Zach Wilson, watch them screw it up and not take Zach Wilson, take a tight end or a, or a defense player or something. I think I think everybody's talking Zach Wilson, but it wouldn't surprise me if they trade down, get an offensive lineman, and maybe go after another quarterback, in which case Zach Wilson would be available for the 49ers, in which case I think it would be a better fit. But then again, I don't know anything, and it looks like Zach Wilson is going to go to the Jets, and I bet he has a good year with the Jets, provided they give him protection and the defense plays as well as they did last year. They were in a lot of low-scoring games last year with Wilson quarterback. They're going to get some more points. That defense will shut people down, and and I don't think they'll compete with Buffalo, maybe not even New England uh, but uh, or Miami for that matter, but, uh, but they're going to be good, and they'll be competitive, and they'll be tough games to play for the New York Jets. As far as the 49ers, I don't care anymore about the draft. Every year, it's the same teams in the draft, the Carolinas, the Atlantas, the Jacksonville Jaguars. By the way, don't call Trevor Lawrence a bust if they have a bad year. It's going to be tough for players to come into situations where they are used to winning, but there's not enough talent on these teams to win right away. And don't, don't say that they're a bust if they don't have a winning record. It takes time to learn in the NFL. It takes time to learn in any professional sport, it takes time to learn in any business for that matter. So don't get on these players if they don't come out successful, provided they're getting the right training, the right coach. Urban Meyer's a great coach. He knows what he can do with quarterbacks. Robert Sala, I'm sure he's got an offensive staff. I don't know who his coordinator is on either side of the ball, but their defense will be better, and Zach Wilson will make that offense better, and hopefully they have some line blocking for the run game and the offensive line as well. All right, you can catch Charlie O and Casey Freelove on Thursday. I'll be gone. 4.15 Eastern, 1.15 Pacific, every Monday, Thursday, and Friday for the Make the Money and Run podcast. We'll post our picks every day or every other day that we have. By the way, uh, in terms of picks, look out for Minnesota and Cleveland tonight. Look at the Cleveland Indians tonight, as well as look at the Warriors tonight, laying four points after the Mavericks loss to the Sacramento Kings in Sacramento. It's going to be a Steph Curry night in in uh, San Francisco, almost at Oakland. In San Francisco tonight, they're laying four points to the Dallas Mavericks. All right, we'll see you soon, everybody. Take care, have a great afternoon, and good luck with all your games. Talk to you soon.